What's up, dudes? So I'm going to take a look at the Operation Deep Freeze patch notes in regards to the designer's notes, which are the contextual patch notes that they write in addition to the official changes themselves that they usually bullet list. I got to do this all in one take. I've had a pretty long work day and I need to get back to work very soon tomorrow as well. I have a couple of videos in the pipeline that are going to be really exciting talking about the new operator and the new map. But for now, let's just talk about the actual changes themselves as they exist within this, you know, within this vacuum. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. Big changes to frag grenades, a lot of secondary gadgets getting swapped around. So let's just do this all in one take and take it from the top. So the balancing matrix in this particular set of patch notes is interesting to me because they added a feature for me to pause instead of it regularly going through the ranked and the console picks. Now, as you guys know, I mainly play this game on PC. Well, I shouldn't say mainly. I exclusively play this game on PC. So I can't really gleam too much in terms of the console statistics. Uh, however, you know, these, these charts don't particularly surprise me. I think that obviously the big takeaways here is that Yana got kind of a hit with the recent utility changes for her end. But Ash pretty much does, you know, everything in terms of the direct gun finding department that any other kind of flavor of the month operator with a good gun will do. She has a solid gadget that can take care of a number of different problems for herself in terms of utility that might get in the way of the gunfight. And the gun's good. Three speed, solid gun, solid gadget. Pretty self-explanatory in terms of the uh, entry fragging department there. But one thing that I have noticed recently is that these pick rates tend to be a little bit more clustered together. There's not a lot of these outliers kind of sitting around here, sitting around here, like we had a long time ago with Jaeger, except for Clash down here. Wind Delta for Clash is considerably low. Sorry, I had a glass of wine before I started, so I got a little bit of acid reflux here. But as you can see, it's pretty well clustered together, especially for defense. I guess you could say, you know, based off of what we're looking at, um, the defense side of the coin is pretty well balanced. I mean, everybody seems to get a decent amount of play. Depending on the situation, everybody can kind of contribute. So this chart from what I'm looking at is pretty interesting. I think this is pretty good. Attack, it's a little bit more, you know, it's, it's a little bit more all over the place because there's so many things that you have to do correctly in order to do an attack in Rainbow Six. And I don't think you really have as much flexibility. You do need a hard breach. You do need something to help open the wall. You need stuff to clear roamers. Right now, Dekebi is really up there for that particular reason. But I'm also noticing that IQ is up here. I'm noticing that Brava is not, you know, particularly low, right? Brava is quite a good operator. She gets a decent amount of usage. Osa gets a decent amount of usage. Even Sens, uh, you know, is up here with Flores and Zero, who are considered to be pretty good operators. In fact, the lowest wind delta out of all of them is Jackal who's considered a pretty oppressive character in a lot of respects. But Ram sitting here, pretty decent rating recently. Honestly, I'm not looking at this and going, wow, there's like some things we really, really need to get ahead of, we really need to fix. Balance-wise, in terms of operator design, the game is pretty well, you know, it's, it's pretty solid. I would say in terms of the actual back and forth, the game is probably the most balanced it's ever been. So we'll have to wait and see. But... There is a couple of things uh, on the horizon here that we should talk about. So obviously, Thatcher, Dekebi, Jackal, not too surprised here. Dekebi is like the premier roam clear operator right now. She's really good at isolating Solus if you have a Solus on the board. Really good counter for that. Fenrir is getting banned quite a bit. Kind of a similar situation here with Mira, where his presence pretty much fundamentally changes the way that you approach the site. And he just, he brings so much upside that there are a lot of situations where you just really don't lose anything by bringing him. He does so much. He can cover wide, vast, sweeping vistas of rooms. He can anchor. He can help with the roam up top. He can do so many different things with this gadget. The ability to stick them onto any kind of surface that he wants pretty much means that you can put Fenrir in any room. Even Mira is pretty isolated to her particular placements where the mirrors work well. But Fenrir can just... Put that, you know, he can put the mine pretty much anywhere he wants and get a ton of value out of it. So I'm not particularly surprised by this. Now, frag grenades. So this is a really, really controversial one. 
and I'm not sure how to feel about it yet. I did initially think it was a little bit too harsh, but the only reason I kind of pivoted away from that initial knee-jerk reaction take was because I think that there is something to be said about the fact that more people have frag grenades. So if you're not familiar with what has happened to frag grenades, the ability to cook frag grenades is getting removed. So what that means is when you, let's, you know, let's say for, uh, for the purpose of demonstration, you have the frag grenade and then you pull the pin or whatever, and then you can let it sit in your hand. And if you don't throw it away, it'll blow up. But now if we want to be military sim nerds, now, when you throw it, the handle goes off, then the fuse timer starts, and then two seconds after it bounces off in an object, uh, it'll explode. So it's kind of like a CS nade, Counter-Strike nade. It pretty much acts directly similar to how stun grenades in Rainbow Six Siege work right now, where they bounce, then it's one, two, boom. So, you know, you can't cook... You can't airburst them, you can't throw them up, and then have them blow people up from the floor below. That's not something you can do anymore. You can't do the sledgehammer trick. I've tried. You can shotgun the frag grenade, though, and then it'll fall through. If you want to go that far. But, yeah. We want to bring the power level of the frag grenade to be in line with all our secondary gadgets. That's the bottom line here. The problem with frag grenades is that they were just objectively better than every other option available for the attackers. Every time an operator got frag grenades, their entire presence on the board at times was defined by that. When they lost frag grenades, their presence could also be defined by that in, a, in an overtly negative way. I hear people, you know, people still talk about Buck's frag grenades that he lost forever ago. People still obviously talk about IQ's nades because they think that IQ needs to be reworked. And bumped up a little bit in terms of her power level. But the cooking is gone. And so because of that, I think something interesting has happened here where the attackers still kind of keep that power differential of being able to blow up utility as well as force people to move out of positions, right? Because the fuse timer does force people to move or get blown up. And it's still useful as a delaying tactic, right? Frag grenades are still useful, still very useful. But they're not going to be as powerful for quick, free, easy picks. They're going to be used to push people out. They're going to be used as you know, utility, right? Kind of like a Flores drone. A Flores drone usually doesn't blow people up outright. But it's still a useful gadget, right? So I think some people are kind of, you know, I'm hearing a lot of different takes. I hear a lot of competitive players upset about this. I hear a lot of not so competitive players upset about this. I personally think this was a difficult decision that Ubisoft had to do one way or another because the grenade hot potato was getting ridiculous. And at a certain point, Ubisoft has to do what they got to do, pull the plug on things that are directly uh, negatively affecting the balancing of the game moving forward. And frag grenades are up there. They just have too much of a in, they have too much influence in terms of operator selection, and it's moving the game in a direction that's just not I don't personally think is you know particularly fun to play, especially if you're a solo queue player. I know that the game is optimized at the team play level, but it's not a mechanic that Ubisoft intended, and that's why they're getting rid of it. So. If I could give you a solid argument as to why, you know, we should get rid of get rid of air bursting and depth charging nades, I would say that the skill gap there is too it, it's it in terms of skill expression, there's too much of this like kind of rift where the only people who are doing this is like, you know, 5% of players who are really really invested in the mechanical stuff and everybody else who can't be bothered. So there are certain mechanics that you can allow in terms of that differential, but this is not one of them because I don't think that it's very intuitive to teach somebody to play around the possibility of just, you know, getting blown up from below when you're doing your job right as a defender, which is to hold an angle, sit on a position, stand your ground, right? Attackers should be fearful of, you know, going into the building and traps and stuff like that. Defenders, you know, I don't know. It's just certain aspects about it that I think 
needed to be worked on and i understand why ubisoft is doing what they are doing so keep it moving uh who gets frag grenades now so like i said frag grenades are still useful they can be used for utility purposes and we have a lot of operators that have frag grenades however before i get into that uh the commando did get nerfed 43 to 47 uh i'm sorry 43 damage from 47 I think that this is, you know, the one part of the patch I'm kind of like, eh, okay. I'm not really sure why this was felt as necessary. I could end up playing the Commando on the live build and then still really like it a lot. The Commando is, has always been a pretty solid gun. I, I honestly, I can't go in the shooting range and test the, uh, the damage differential now because the mode has been turned off on the test server in order for people to play the new training mode, uh, the map run stuff. But... I don't think that the commando was necessary for a nerf. And, you know, I think it's more of a nerf for Grim than it is specifically a nerf for IQ. I could be a moron. Um, but it is, it, they do specify the commando. Okay, so it must be contextualized with IQ then because they're listing the commando first. So, you know, it, it indirectly ends up kind of nerfing Grim. They do give him something. I forget exactly what it was when I looked at the patch notes uh, right away, but I'll get to that. I thought the commando was fine. Um, you know, new damage, one armor operators will take three bullets instead of two to get downed. So, okay. I, I just, I don't think it was necessarily a problem. But hey, what do I know? I'll probably use the AUG anyway because I won't feel very good about, about this gun being nerfed the way it was. I thought it was a, it was a skill-based gun. It had a low rate of fire. It had decent damage. It, you know whatever my 1.5 my 1.5 crutch got nerfed what again what can i do at least she got her nades back uh lion is getting the gone six removed which is big 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 so it looks like Takebi is pretty much going to replace his job for the most part because i think oh wait well don't speak too soon because frag grenades actually no i'm right because Takebi still has the gone six and emps which gives her emp destruction plus um, explodey, <laughs> shrapnel destruction, right? Uh, gadget destruction in form of the gun. Uh, so Lion gets frags, but he does not have the EMP destruction anymore, right? So he is solely tailored towards uh, explosive potential instead of the EMP plus the gun combo, which in a lot of ways I think is a little bit better because it gives you a wider range of stuff to blow up. Frag grenades are a little bit more specific, but he's still pretty decent as a result of this change. And it'll synergize with this gadget in an interesting way. Yeah. So E1D forces defenders to stay still, giving the defender no options against a cook grenade. That was also a pretty, you know, powerful um, combination there and something that I talked about in previous videos. There's no, yeah, there was no particular counterplay to this. Um, so it is something that I think is, is a smart change in regards to that context. But Lion's still going to be pretty good. He can obviously synergize off of his new frag grenades, even though they have been nerfed. And I think it's going to help him out a lot. You're going to see a lot more frag grenades in general just because the gadget is, you know, not as powerful as it used to be. But the power differential is still going to be, you know, in favor of the attackers in many different ways who are going to have options that they normally would not have. So Sens is up there too. Sens lost their gun six and they get frag grenades in place of that, which is pretty cool. You can get tricky with the light wall. You can throw the nades through the light wall. You can get aggressive. The only thing that I would like for Sens to have now is a shotgun. But I think that might be a little OP. It'd be fun, though. You can try it on the test server, Yubi, huh? Is it going to hurt you? So Osa also gets frag grenades, which I think is going to help her, too. I never really ran the smoke grenades on Osa. I always ran EMPs. She usually synergizes with opening the wall, so that made a lot of sense for her role. Get the wall open, put the shield down, play for picks. Sometimes I'll play with an ACOG if I'm feeling spicy. But the frag grenades are cool. Again, you're not thinking of, you know, getting direct um, lethal impact out of these options. You're trying to get rid of maestro cameras, bulletproof cameras, uh, Malusi's, you know, maybe on a staircase far away. Just any kind of bulletproof utility that might be on the site somewhere. So this is nice to have. You're going to have a lot of operators, like I said, that will have that power differential where they normally would not. Here comes the wine. <clears throat> Blackbeard uh, lost EMPs, now gets frags. I think there's a number of other things that they should do to Blackbeard besides this, but, you know, we, we can we can keep it moving. Uh, Capital has EMP grenades in his 
kit as an option now. So Capital is really just a, he's, he's a Swiss army guy. I mean, this guy can do everything, right? Is there a thing that he's not good at? I mean, he has decent guns that have low rate of fire, but if you shoot your shot, you know, you're good. Um, gun six, EMPs, smokes, area denial. This guy can do everything. Um, if you are a gadget minded player, you should play more Capital. He's a pretty self-sufficient character, uh, especially as a result of this. This guy's like create a class in Call of Duty, seriously. Grim lost the breaching charges. Interesting. Um, he gains EMPs, which gives him a little bit more, you know, a little bit more moolah, right, in terms of his actual direct utility, because he does not have a gone six like Capital does. I think that's going to give him a, a decent amount of options. He's going to be a much more self sufficient character, able to deal with a utility that'll make it difficult for him to make plays, which is nice. And you can also help open wall, get the wall open. Help out with an execute. Get the bees going. Good gadget synergy there. My nose is itching. I'm not picking my nose. I almost knocked over my water over my keyboard. So this is another big change here. Moving on from all of the gadget swapping. So Mira. Mira now has another counter. And a lot of people are freaking out about this one. And, um, you know, it's, it's a siege community. I get it. Um, but she's still going to be fine. So she gets two characters that are going to act as a counter to her now. Ashes, Breaching Round, and Callie's Lance. When it impacts the Mira, it's going to do the exact same thing as you do when you melee it, right? When it kind of like shatters the glass. That's an interesting change. I always thought it was kind of weird that they couldn't do that because it makes intuitive sense to me, right? A lot of people complained about the realism about meleeing the glass. But Ash and Callie, for some reason, you know, the Mira was just fine whenever you used it. So maybe you can make an argument for just these two gadgets in particular doing this and not the melee. I personally think it's fine. I never got I never got why people got so uh, spun up about the whole like, oh, well, now they can just melee the glass. It's useless, bro. Just shoot them. Like, if they're that close, then they've done a number of things, I think, to get in position that your team has allowed to take place. So just, I don't know, just try just get good, I guess. There's a lot of get good isms here. I understand it. I understand why people are upset, but I don't think people understand how Mira, you know, she's so strong, dude. She completely changes the way a site take is handled sometimes. There are a lot of situations where you just see the setup and then you go, I don't want to deal with the setup at all. I'm going to rotate somewhere else. That's not uncommon when a Mira's on the board. So she, she can still protect her, she can still protect Something. I almost said something else. She can still protect her gadgets with the help of other teammates. It's a team-based game, like la di da You got Mozzie. You got Mute to deal with the, um, the Twitch drones. Just bring a Womai. Just bring a Jaeger. Okay? It's a counter. It gives other players an ability to interface with the game. Come on. You know, some people are really, really just self-reporting hard. On this one, Mira is going to be fine after all this change. Argue with your mother. You're wrong. <laughs> Don't try. Uh, Maestro, three evil eyes. Decent change for him. This is going to be really cool. So what he can do is he can set up two cameras, one for each site, and then he can probably put something over for a chokehold. The really interesting component of this change, though, is the fact that the battery runs for six seconds, which means that if Ash, if any other kind of three speed is trying to plant the bomb, if you get on the camera right away, you can prevent the plant now. So that will kill one armors and it'll down two to three armors, as you can see here. This is massive. This is so cool. This is a massive buff for him. I'm really happy about this one. I know a lot of people keep you know, saying like, oh, but you, uh, uh, you can just melee. You can just melee. Other people can play the game but me. Uh, there's counterplay. Dude, this is great. This is really cool. I mean, this was like the main thing that people were upset about when that nerf uh, initially got applied where he couldn't. You know, the whole point was to keep the camera on site and prevent plants. Now he has more cameras, you can get more creative and risky with the placement of them, and you can stop plants from going down. This is a huge buff. I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. He's going to get a lot of play. 
uh, and competitive. Maybe not a lot of play, but there's going to be a lot of instances where he's going to be seen as an option. And I think that's really cool. So, yeah, really cool change. Um, yeah, I'm going to be playing a lot more Maestro. Moving forward, there's like uh, some map stuff, and that's the end of the patch. Um, I play ranked, so I don't know anything about this. Uh, we feel confident. I'm not reading all that. <laughs> if you want to know about quick match and standard, go ahead and uh, and check it out in the in the description down below. But yeah, that's my review of the patch. So I think it's going to be a pretty fun patch overall. Obviously, you get all of this, and then you get the new map. Uh, you know, brand new map, right? You get the new map, and then you get the new operator who is a crowd controlling defender. I think it's gonna be a really fun patch. Um, I've had a lot of fun exploring and testing out and figuring out the new map, kind of you know getting my teeth into that. It's got a lot of different avenues of attack in terms of you know what floors you can actually go from, top floor, middle floor, below. You start in the spawn and then you can go to any of the elevations from a lot of the spawns, which is something I don't think is really characteristic of a lot of maps in the game right now. So that gives the attackers a lot more flexibility in terms of their spawn positioning, which I think is really neat. Um, there's also a lot of verticality and just a lot of like classic, you know, siege flow in terms of the gunfighting. It's really cool. I'm liking it a lot so far. And I'm eager to play it on the live build. I think this is going to be a really interesting patch. I think the new operator might be just, uh, just a little bit overtuned, but you know, we can let him be a little overtuned for three months, right? But yeah, um, that's Operation Deep Freeze. So if you guys want to see the map video as soon as it comes out, hit the bell. Let me know if you like the video. Let me let me know if uh, if you have any of your takes in the comments down below about Operation Deep Freeze. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a fun season, and I can't wait to see you guys um, out there on the battlefield. I am trying to get back into my streaming schedule again. I know. Um, but seriously, I'm going to try to maintain it a little bit more. I'm going to say this now and then, you know, fall off the wagon again, like I usually do. But uh, we're going to get back right on it. And yeah, I'm waffling <laughs> right now. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, take care, everybody. Deuces.